So if you're wondering what on earth the purpose of this is, it turns the chicken coop essentially into a greenhouse. So here's the inside of the coop. Let me give you guys a little update. I haven't made a video in here forever. Got some eggs in here. But uh, yeah, so this is all um, framed, insulated OSB board. The top is open for ventilation. It doesn't need to be that open. In fact, I could close it most of the way off, but that's the way that this one is at the moment. And what I did with the plastic out here, this is something that dad always did growing up and it makes sense to do. So that's why we're doing it with our chicken coop. So essentially all we're doing is we took some big uh, eight mil, I think it's a, was it four mil or eight mil? I don't even remember. Anyways, we just wrapped the whole thing in clear plastic and it's kind of nice because you can still see in there. They can still kind of see out. A little bit foggy, but they can still kind of see out. Uh, but essentially what it does, it creates this barrier so that there's literally like almost zero wind blowing through this coop ever. And so they can walk around on the outside and still get their feed water, you know, and scratch around out in the new straw and you know, not have to have the wind and snow ripping through there all winter. So essentially it's just winterizing the coop. So here's new injectors for the resto gen. These are supposed to be 100 horse over stock with injectors just because it says, oh, these are 100 horsepower injectors. That doesn't necessarily mean like you're gonna slap these things in and oh, 150 horsepower is stock. So plus 100, that's 250. It doesn't work like that. I know that in theory it would be awesome. You're only gonna get that additional 100 horse if you do all the other mods necessary to get that extra 100 horse out of it. These are just saying that these are capable of handling up to 100 over stock. We do have some other stuff to go along with it. We have a fuel pin, we gotta do a fuel screw modification, and we have a governor spring for that, all for that fuel pump to try to get a little bit more fuel out of it. I'm not gonna be doing all that myself necessarily. The governor spring and the fuel pin, that's pretty easy stuff, but the fuel screw kind of makes me nervous because that thing could run away on me if I'm not careful. So I'm probably gonna wait to do that. Let's get to working on this and seeing what we can't get put in there. So for now, I'm gonna start off though with some gauges for the truck. That way, once we have the other modifications in and we do our first drive, we can read all of what's going on with the you know, exhaust temperatures, boost, stuff like that. And the gauges I decided to go with through Glow Shift was the fuel pressure, exhaust temperature, and boost. The reason with fuel pressure instead of like a transmission gauge, well, it's got a stick in it. I'm not too worried about the transmission, you know, quote unquote, burning up on this thing because it is a manual transmission. If it was an automatic, I would recommend getting a trans temp. Um, still getting like fuel pressure and stuff like that, but maybe adding like some gauges over here. They have some dash mounted kits as well, but this kit is going to be mounted up right here alongside the pillar here, and it's gonna look pretty good. Okay, so the first wiring set we're gonna run is for your boost gauge, which is gonna be this guy right here. And this one is very simple. So we're gonna be running this pressure tubing through the dash underneath but we're gonna be running it right into there. There's a little screw coming out right there, and that is how we're gonna be able to read your boost pressure. And I'll show you what this looks like once this is ran and ready to go. Well, we took that little plug out of that little threaded hole just below the intake horn there, and you're gonna take your new small piece, and that was a 7 16 head, by the way, to back that out. You're gonna take this piece here, put a little bit of Teflon tape on it, and thread it on in. Let me show you what I did here. So there's a fitting just like this one on the side in the engine bay. So there's this right here, and then there's this little, let me slide this back, there's this little piece right here. So what you're gonna do with this little piece, it's like a little cone shaped, it's gonna go in here, and then it's gonna go in like this. And then what happens is once you tighten this down on with a wrench, and you start to give it a little bit more tension, it'll kind of crimp that little cone-shaped piece that was in there, um, this one right here. It'll kind of crimp it around the plastic just a little bit to hold it in place. I've already got this one situated, so we're gonna give this a couple turns, get it so that it'll tighten on there nice. And it doesn't need to be crazy tight. Give it a few more so it'll kind of pinch that little cone-shaped piece around that plastic tube just to kind of hold it in place so that it doesn't blow off of there and then not read your boost pressure. Give a little tug there. That ain't going nowhere. Day two of this video, hopefully in this day, we can get this video 
done and out to you guys. Continuing with the install, where we left off last night was with the boost pressure gauge line. We got that at least fed. Now there's a lot of other stuff that we still got to do. We really only got that done yesterday and then we had to go to film a hunting video. Hunting channel link is always in the description below. Anyways, let's get on to the next step. So I got the EGT gauge wiring ran, connected, zip tied back up out of the way. This is for the fuel pressure. I am going to hook up the gauge, run the wiring, the electronics to it, and then leave this right here so that way when I do upgrade the fuel system and just want to hook that up in general, it's ready to go and I don't have to like undo a bunch of stuff to get to it. The next thing is going to be wiring the gauges to the fuse panel and then mounting the gauges up on the pillar. <laughs> And so when it comes to wiring these things up, it's actually really simple. Each of these gauges have four wires coming off of them, orange, yellow, black, and red. They're all the same in terms of the color coordination for each one and what they mean. Here's a harness that came with the kit that I bought. I don't know if they all come with it. These little connectors here have the necessary hookups on each one. That way you hook them all up inside the pillar up top and keep this mess up hidden behind there. And then all you have to do is run the ground and then the yellow, red, and orange down into the fuse panel. It looks like a mess, but I promise you guys, it's really not that bad. It's all color coordinated. You don't have to like guess and try to figure out what sub means. Just connect the proper colors to the proper wires. And like I said, each one of these little things has the three that you're gonna need already branched off of that connection so that you don't have to try to make your own. What I'll try to do is leave a link in the description below to this exact glow shift gauge setup, which is just the one that I bought. That way, if you guys are interested in it and having this kit as simple as it is, you guys can do the same thing on your truck. But keep in mind that the kit that I bought is first gen Dodge specific. <laughs> gauge setup I'll put in. I did use some self tappers. There were already screws there from like the trim screws. So what I ended up doing was just putting the self tappers in the holes that were already there. There were no screws provided with the kit. I don't understand why there wasn't, but that was the only complaint that I would have with the kit is that it doesn't come with screws for this, but it's not a big deal. These are super cheap. You can find them pretty much at any, any store that sells hardware stuff. Even though you cannot see anything. Let me get my flashlight here. Okay, so there's the self-tapper I use there, self-tapper I use there. But like I said, there's already um, holes all over around the cab for those screws. So that's all I did was I threaded those into the holes that were already pre-existing. Okay, just turned on with the key, which is good. Sweet. Now, the only one that like doesn't make a lot of sense, at least at the moment, is fuel pressure, it says that it's at 30 PSI. Which doesn't make a lot of sense. The exhaust temp is reading, slowly climbing up. It says it's at 175-ish right now, almost to 200. The boost gauge. Probably isn't really gonna show much of any kind of boost pressure until you're on the road actually creating a little bit of boost and we also haven't done any of the fuel mods so it's gonna take a little bit there for it to read much um, unless you're moving down the road but there it is the fuel pressure one like I said it's not hooked up yet I ran the wiring I wired everything up since I am going to be doing some fuel system upgrade soon I figured I would just wait on that a little bit because right now I'm just running you know stock fuel and stock power I haven't done the injectors or anything yet so not super concerned about that quite yet. At this point, this is how I have it set up. Looks pretty good, I like the setting. And I'm gonna leave it on blue because it matches the blue interior with the, the gauge color right now. It's actually coincidental, but it works out.
forget that if you want to get 20 times the entries towards winning the Whistling Diesel 3rd Gen plus $5,000 cash, that deal ends November 4th at 11.59 p.m., which is tomorrow, so don't miss out. If you wanna get 20X entries, this is our best deal, our best multiplier, and it ends tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. Not only that, but the giveaway itself ends on November 11th, which is in just a handful of days now. So you got pretty much a week left and that's it. And then the giveaway is gone. For everybody wondering about orders, we are shipping orders like crazy. I've got four people here packing orders as fast as they can right now. And let me kind of explain what happened with the whole order thing. I've explained it before, but I'm gonna explain it thoroughly now. So we started doing our own fulfillment on August 3rd. That's when we started doing it ourselves and didn't have another company doing it for us. At that time, we were doing the Ford OBS giveaway. And so I only needed really one or two people packing full time. And that was totally fine. We were keeping orders shipped out. Most people were, you know, excited and we were getting comments and people saying, dude, I, you know, I literally placed an order a week ago and I've already got it. You know, like stuff was shipping quick and there was no shipping issues. Now, we bought the Whistling Diesel first gen in Dually. As you can imagine, when we got the first gen giveaway launched, orders flooded us like way more than normal, like almost twice the normal order volume. He was, you know, Whistling Diesel, Cody, he was posting on his story for us I and mean, a bunch of other stuff. So it was just like orders were just flooding in for that truck. So then what happened was we didn't realize we were like, oh, you know, we can handle the volume. So then they just put in more hours. Well, once a week had gone by, I'm like, okay, we're not keeping up with this. We hired another person. Okay, now we've got three people packing full time. Another week goes by and they're packing a lot of orders, but they still can't keep up with it. So then a third week goes by, we hire another person and then another person. So we ended up getting behind about a month, give or take, and we have had no issues since about I wanna say the last week and a half-ish, two weeks, we've been pretty much shipping twice as many orders that we are getting in. We're shipping out right now in terms of gaining traction because of the orders that got us swamped in the first place that kind of got us put behind. We're gaining traction back and we're gonna be back on track very soon. And I know there's some people that are frustrated. You know, I don't like waiting for stuff either. I can deal with waiting three, four weeks for something, but obviously nobody prefers that. That's not as fun when you order something and you're anticipating it, you're excited about it and you gotta wait three, four weeks. It's just, it's not fun. I understand that. And that's why we hired on more than enough helps so that after, you know, we catch up, let's say we're projecting in the next 14 days, we'll be all caught up to where we won't have any long waiting orders anymore. And we can keep stuff shipping out within same week time frame. That is our goal. That's what we wanted to do when we started this back on August, when we started doing it ourselves. But of course, when we got those whistle diesel trucks, it just really, I mean, it, I mean, it really swamped us, which is what we wanted. We just didn't realize how much it would you know, put us behind. And so we just had to compensate for it. And you know, like if you get behind like that, it's not just an overnight thing like, oh, all these packages can be out tomorrow. No, like we have to package every single order and ship it out. I mean, it, it takes more time than you guys think. So we are regaining traction and there are still some orders that are waiting, but we are shipping them out way faster than we are getting them right now. So we are projecting that within the next 10 to 14 days, we will be completely caught up and orders are gonna be going out quick again. So, all that being said, everybody will get their order. I know there's some people that like to over exaggerate and be like, oh, I've been waiting three months for my order. That's, we don't have any orders for more than five weeks out. So that can't be true. Um, but anyways, we are gonna ship every single order. We always do, we always have, you're gonna get it. Thank you guys so much for all the love and support. Thank you guys so much for, you know, understanding. We wanna try to offer the best service possible. We just got a lot more than we could handle about a month ago. So it kind of really, I mean, it really took a toll, but you know, we fixed the issue. It's just gonna take uh, almost two weeks to get everything caught back up to speed. Anyways, guys, thank you so much. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to enter to win that third gen 20 Accenture's in tomorrow. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.